guys, it's spring and I am about to show you another one of my fallout settlements and I hope you like it. Um, I know not everybody loves the, uh, the let's play kind of stuff, but I've had a lot of fun playing with the settlements in Fallout 4 and so I thought I'd show you just one more of my settlements. And, um, like before, um, my settlement is really just kind of, um, some place I'd like to live. So, if you want to see some seriously amazing settlements, uh, they exist, um, on the internet. And they're, some of them are just, the scale is ridiculous. Um, but mine are just places I would like to live. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, to answer just a couple questions from the last one, um, I'm using a mod called Homemaker, and, uh, I really like the Homemaker mod. It gives you a lot of different, uh, building prefabs and furniture and furnishings and things like that. So I highly recommend it if you play Fallout on PC. And I also have used a mod uh, to bring a higher budget um, to my settlements. So you can you can just Google uh, higher settlement mods, um, or you know what? I'll put links to them in the comments. That works. So um, finally, a couple of you asked my opinions about Fallout 4, and um, obviously I've had fun with the settlements. Uh, I didn't really enjoy the settlement process um, while I was playing the game. I thought it was a little bit cumbersome, and um, it didn't flow very well with the rest of the game, but once I finished the main, main quests, I enjoyed it. So, And I like Fallout 4. I don't know if I call it a masterpiece, um, but as a shooter, it's really fun, and uh, I like the companions in it a lot, so anyway. Uh, oh, and I, I am uh, building in god mode. Um, I, I didn't build all of my settlements in god mode, um, but it gives you unlimited supplies, so it's kind of nice. Uh, once you finish the game. Although I will say, I did enjoy having to sort of um, seek out uh, supplies and things like that during the game. So if you want to use God Mode, you can just click into your console um, and then just actually type in TGM for Toggle God Mode and that'll do it. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, I really hope you like my settlement. Um, I'll narrate it kind of like I did the last one, which this is kind of silly, but almost like like a realtor or something. I really like the kind of monotone of like tour guides and salespeople, so I'll kind of narrate it that way for you. Uh, and anyway, I really hope you like it. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and enjoy. Okay. First, before we show you our current settlement here at the Sunshine Tidings Co-op, I'd like to give you a look at how it was when we first arrived here. You'll notice that just like the rest of the Commonwealth, the Sunshine Tidings Co-op has suffered because of nuclear fallout. Most of the plant life here is dead, and even though it was established as a co-op, very little is able to successfully grow at this time. Um, as we look around, you can see that it looks just like the rest of the Commonwealth. There were feral ghouls overrunning it to begin with. Most of the 
those have been taken care of, though today, presently, we still do sometimes have feral bulls come by. But we have great defense now. Back then, not so much. So you'll see that even though it has the bones of a nice settlement, it's really uh, quite run down. And um, not so appealing for families or people trying to really start over uh, with their lives. So you can see what the cabins look like. We still do feature all of the original cabins, um, but back when we first found them, they weren't necessarily that comfortable. Very few furnishings existed, of course, and um, most of the trees and the plant life was dead. But you do see that we did have ample space to work with. Here you'll see dried up old bushes. And just general decay. Again, we have worked with the existing structures here, so you'll see how we've renovated all of this. And you can see that there were a couple people trying to really make a go out of it here. But with the dead trees and the soil not being in great condition, it was quite difficult. Hard living. Um, the people had some of the basic essentials, but not much more. And many of the trees that were once lush and beautiful in this area um, were unfortunately broken, dead, uh, reduced just to stumps and things like that. And there was very little in the way of any kind of electricity, any kind of comfort. But you could perhaps start to see why we fell in love with the co-op and decided to make it an outpost for people. Um, the Minutemen protect, uh, protect it today. Uh, however, the people here are quite self-sufficient. And you'll see why soon. But I just wanted to give you a basis for comparison, so that when you see how the place has changed, you can fully appreciate it. So now we're going to take a look at the settlement as we know it today. And I'll be walking around with Kate uh, to help show off the changes we've made. Most of them have to do with replanting and reviving the land here and the foliage. As you can see in the rest of the Commonwealth, um, it's still very drab and arid. But if we look at the Sunshine Tidings Co-op today, you'll see that it's extremely lush forest now. The people here really celebrate the greenery, the flora, and the fauna. And they've turned it into a very functional mute, fute, uh, mute fruit winery, which we'll show you first. Because the people here wanted to find something that would give them a source of income, so the heart and soul of the settlement is the winery. We make the best mute fruit wine in the Commonwealth. And we're very proud of it. It allows us to be peaceful, maintain good relationships with traders, and have some autonomy and security for the families who settle here. As we look around, this is the tasting room to our winery. It's refurbished from the original center of the co-op. And today, you can come and taste lots of different kinds of mute fruit and wine. 
and we have this lovely dining area. Kate's going to demonstrate it for us. I think it's particularly pretty at nighttime. You'll also see that we've installed this beautiful stone tower to our left, which we'll come back to in a moment. But for now, you can see how lovely the winery is. Peaceful, serene. And here's where we grow most of our crops. You'll also see we have Brahmin here. They're very happy. And they help us watch out for our mute yu trees. If you've never had mute fruit before, it has a lovely tart quality. It's still sweet, which makes it perfect for wine. As you can see, we've built this tower as sort of a centerpiece for our little neighborhood. It also brings in lots of tourists who come from all over the Commonwealth to see it. You can see at the bottom, just like at the heart of everything here, is mute fruit. This is considered some of the best mute fruit in the Commonwealth here in this tower. Locals enjoy the tradition of picking a piece of mute fruit from the trees and then climbing all the way to the top of the tower to drop off a piece of mute fruit and make a wish. And as we climb the tower, you'll note that we keep it lit with candles like we do everything here. But we would like to remind you that only you can prevent Commonwealth fires, so do please be careful with candles. It's a nice night, though sometimes you can come up to the top of the tower and really see the stars. It's a wonderful place for contemplation, and it also provides a great lookout tower just in case of danger. Just like everything at the co-op, the tower is maintained by the residents here. We each take our own turns cleaning and maintaining, relighting the candles, and of course tending to the mute fruit trees. You can really get a sense of how tall it is. Now we're going to show you a little bit more about the neighborhood. Sunshine Tidings wasn't always such a nice neighborhood, though now it's quite bucolic, serene, and again, uh, surrounded by a canopy of beautiful trees and even roses, as you see here. As I've said before, the locals tend to worship the trees, and so you'll notice little shrines of candles. These are set out to illuminate nature. Right now, most of our residents are napping. This is our resident first arrival center. If you've been to another settlement, like on Spectacle Island, we have the same thing. It's a nice way for the Minutemen to be able to set out uh, quarters for newcomers before they decide where they'd like to settle down within the settlement. But we've also built this lovely tree house right below the tree canopy on top of our arrival center. We have pool here and lots of places to lounge. Speaking of lounging, these are our memory loungers. They are some of the only loungers that work in the Commonwealth outside of the memory den. If you don't want to travel all the way to the memory den, you can enjoy them right here. If you've never sat in a memory lounger before, uh, they can help you relive some of the best moments of your life again and again. Again, we're right under the lush canopy of trees here, and you can see that we have 
all of the furnishings for a wonderful bar and club. We have uh, food dispensers, um, jukebox, radio system all around. We have disco lights and even a DJ mixing station. We have some great DJs in the Commonwealth and they like to come here to perform. We also sometimes enjoy vocal stylings, and we're set up for that too. So the Treehouse Lounge is a wonderful place to remember the past, live in the present, and dream of the future. Now we're going to take a look into residential life here. A lot of our houses are modeled on pre-war houses found in the Co uh, Covenant Settlement. Covenant is a lovely place, uh, currently occupied by the Minutemen. But if you prefer a woodsy surrounding, then you can't beat life here at Sunshine. This house is set up perfectly for a small family. And it has its lovely dining area. It's one of my favorite features. Now we'll look at some of the public features. Here's a shared bathroom facility. We do have hot water and everything is very clean here. We hope to set up private bathrooms for every residence in the next five years. But for now, people are content to share. Some of the homes do have private baths. However, many of them, like this cabin, is original. I do apologize for any bodies you might find. We do once in a while have to deal with the feral ghoul attacks, although we are very well equipped to handle them. And as you can see, this particular settler isn't bothered at all and is still getting a nice night's sleep. You can see that we have hidden away a secret kitchen and a secret bathroom, making this cabin a very complete home. There's also a lovely spot to sit and contemplate, as well as brand new shrubberies all around. Next door is one of our Thoreau-style cabins, modeled after Thoreau's um, cabin that he once built by Walden Pond many hundreds of years ago. However, this is a public space for listening we have one of our best radio set up, and a chaise lounger. Residents come here to just listen to the music, read, meditate, and contemplate. And outside of the Thoreau style cabin, you'll see one of our largest maple trees. It's very peaceful and lovely to walk around here at night. Next door, You'll see another one of our furnished houses based on the Covenant series. Again, the classic Covenant architecture is set up by more modern furniture, inspired by furniture found at the Institute. This is a great starter home for a family. And we haven't gone out of our way to overly furnish some of these homes because we want you to feel at home and to use your imagination to furnish these places the way you would like to. Of course, some of them are already occupied, like this little number, which has a lovely uh, iron fence and trellis right outside of the bushes, which are perfectly pruned. As we walk around, we'll see that this is a one of the other original cabins from Sunshine Tidings Co-op, but we've renovated and updated. The family here enjoys a fireplace, a private dining table, and all the comforts of home, as well as their own little place to sit down, which Kate is kind enough to show you. She seems to always have a drink at the ready. Quite peaceful here at nighttime. Here's
here's another one of our Thoreau-style cabins. This one is furnished for a single or a double occupancy. It's simple existential living for the true trans transcendentalist at heart. <laughs> You'll notice that we do have working power throughout the settlement. But most of us here are energy friendly and prefer firelight. This one has been re-renovated and has a bit of a secret back door. But just like the other cabins, it has the comforts of home. A nice clean warm bed, a little bit of art, and of course, a radio tuned to Diamond City. As we walk out by the silos, we'll see even more of that lovely ground coverage. It's green all year round here at Sunshine Tidings, but we do get some lovely fall foliage. As we head up the hill, we can take a look back to the center of the commune. I'm sorry, the co-op. And we'll head up to one of our other cabins. I call this one the cabin on the hill. The cabin on the hill is perfectly situated. And it has more electricity than some of our other cabins with a fully functional television. Once again, has very soft Egyptian cotton sheets. And its own little balcony. As sun begins to rise here on the co-op, and take another look around. I love it at this time of day. This is one of our biggest and best homes. It's set up with many places to enjoy and socialize. It has a semi-private master bedroom. And it has lovely wall sconces that provide light and atmosphere. It also has the biggest dining area in the settlement. And a room perfectly set up for a young boy who's perhaps growing up fast. This room is fully furnished with a special young man in mind. With fun little details that children might enjoy. And of course, a place to study. And what young man doesn't want to grow up to become a minute man himself? Again, you can see that the wallpaper is perhaps in need of a little update. But the house is both historic and romantic, and has rose bushes outside. At this time of day, you can really start to see the beautiful colors, light, and shade here. We work hard on landscaping. And we hope to have more green grass and ground coverage as we go forward. Here's another Thoreau-style cabin. Simplicity is the key. And it's perfectly set up for somebody who likes solitude as well as living within a community. Next door, we have another one of the original cabins with patio furniture. Uh-oh. It looks like we've had another unwelcome guest, but security will take care of that shortly. This cabin is a hunter's dream. Of course, we only allow hunting of hostile creatures. And as we frolic, through, we'll see more roses and more trees, as well as one more cabin. This final cabin, of 
course, has a place for dining, seating outdoors, as well as everything traditional on the inside and a little extra. This luxury cabin has its own fireplace, a beautiful bed, bucolic paintings, and its own bar. This little home is an entertainer's dream, perfect for living and socializing comfortably. And as the day dawns and sunshine tidings, we hope that you've enjoyed your time here. And we'll take a couple last looks to give you a chance to see what it's like in the daytime. We're especially proud of our roses here. And we hope someday to sell our roses alongside our mute fruit concessions. If you think you would enjoy being part of our co-op, we welcome you to apply for membership. We are, at this time, welcoming new families into the community. And we'd love to get to know you. It is by far the most lush and green of all of the settlements here. And while we may not have all the amenities of somewhere like Spectacle Island, we make up for it in natural pastoral beauty. It's our little oasis in the Commonwealth, and we thank you so much for joining us on this tour.